presents... From Adventureland, Rapids Ahead, and Bear Country. This program is brought to you by Canada Dry, America's first family of beverages, makers of the world's best-selling ginger ale and a variety of sparkling beverages and mixers, and the clear new economy sandwich wrap, handy wrap, keeps sandwiches far fresher, 100 beaded wax paper prices, handy wrap. Girls, I packed my husband's lunch. So am I glad they invented new Handy Wrap. Now Daddy likes the sandwich wrap. Handy Wrap, the clear new economy sandwich wrap for lunch boxes. Keeps sandwiches far fresher, far longer. Here's why. I've broken an egg into a bowl lined with Handy Wrap. I'm plunging it into boiling water. See, imagine what would happen to ordinary sandwich wrap. Handy Wrap really locks in freshness. See, not a hint of a leak. Now Daddy likes the sandwiches. New Handy Wrap. Tears with a snap. Stays put where you want it. Yet it's so easy to handle. Now Daddy likes the sandwiches! Honey, you've unrolled yards of handy wrap. Good thing it doesn't cost much. You get 100 feet at wax paper prices. 100 feet wraps 100 sandwiches. Get new handy wrap, a product of the Dow Chemical Company. Now Daddy likes the sandwiches! And now, your Disneyland host, Walt Disney. This program is a two-part true life adventure show. One of our stories is about animals, the true account of a way of life in nature. The other is the behind-the-scenes story of our motion picture, Ten Who Dared, showing how we went about reenacting a human adventure that actually happened in history. In a story such as Bear Country, which we'll present a little later, we send our cameramen into the wild and ask them to record what they see. But to reenact an adventure involving people presents an entirely different problem. For a long time now, we have been interested in the story of Major John Wesley Powell, the first man to go through the Grand Canyon by boat. We found our story in this journal of his, written in 1869. To make a movie in the Grand Canyon was a big order, and there were those who said it couldn't be done. But as far back as 1947, we sent a survey party down the river to see just what our chances might be. Was it going to be possible for a movie company to enter this gorge, accomplish its purpose, and come out safely at the other end? Our scout made the trip with the late Norman Nevels, a riverman of vast experience on the Colorado. For a number of years, he'd been taking parties of tourists through the canyon on a regular schedule. From the beginning, it was a wild ride. Time and again, it appeared that the tiny boats were about to be swamped. This raised the question of how to keep the cameras dry. Our cameraman made a note for future reference. A lot was going to depend on the pilots. Powell had gone down the river head on, while Nevels preferred to slip into a rapid stern first. Facing downstream, he could see the rocks and whirlpools ahead, and so had a better chance of avoiding them. We had decided to stick to the Major's original way, but we could see it wasn't going to make the problem any easier. Try to take a boat through the worst of the rapids, we were told, and you court certain disaster. And so on one point, Neville's and Powell's methods were alike. This was in the matter of lining the boats past the bad spots. When we thought of an entire movie company doing this, not once, but many times during the trip, we began to consider the whole project impractical. Our 
Our first scouting trip had been helpful, but not very hopeful. So for the moment, the picture was put aside. Then in 1953, we decided to try again. By that time, power boats had come into their own, and this promised more control in bad water and more guarantee of success. And so a second survey party went down the river. This time, our production experts went along. They were looking for such things as campsites, supply points, fueling stations, places for radio contact, and not to be ignored, escape routes out of the canyon. By now, we knew the rapids by name. Some we recognized as old friends, and some as old enemies. The worst of them, Lava Falls, was out of the question. We'd be lucky just to get through. But at places like Bright Angel, Monument Creek, and Mile 217, we felt we had a fair chance of reenacting the Powell story. Canada Dry goes to an amusement park. Sparkling Canada Dry ginger ale and sparkling fun go hand in hand. In fact, whenever the action is lively, have Canada Dry ginger ale handy. When you can use a quick energy lift, just nothing does it better than Canada Dry ginger ale. The taste is real lively, too. Dry, light, bright. Not sugary sweet, not filling. A real first quencher, a nutritious vital refresher, too. Canada Dry Ginger Ale is world famous for its flavor, fizz, and fun. Sparkling Canada Dry Ginger Ale. In six bottle cartons and big family size bottles. From America's first family of beverages. As things worked out, it was 1958 before the first production company was ready. By that time, we had the technical assistance of Doc Marston of Berkeley, California. His lifelong hobbies have been Powell, the Colorado River, and boats, in just about that order. He helped us design this special camera boat. It could shoot in any direction, and its camera stations included this one, well forward on the prow. Cameras and boat were one solid platform, as solid as you could expect it to be in wild water. And we felt we were ready for anything the river might throw at us. Just to make sure, we sent the camera boat out on a trial run. It passed its tests with flying colors. In fact, it had power enough to fight its way back upstream in case we ever needed a retake. Now, cameras, cast, and production company were ready at last. The picture everyone said couldn't be made was about to be filmed. Historically, the conquest of the Grand Canyon involved 10 men, and that is the title of the motion picture we made, 10 Who Dared. It's an authentic tale, and here are some of the motion picture's highlights taken from Major Powell's journal. I decided to embark at Green River, Wyoming, the Major wrote. Accordingly, I fitted out four sturdy boats. With the help of some like-minded companions, I loaded these with provisions and equipment, enough to last for several months. Powell's like-minded companions included a tough old mountain man named Bill Dunn, his own brother, Captain Walter Powell, an ex-Confederate soldier, George Bradley, his chief boatsman, Jack Sumner, an itinerant newspaper man, Oramal Howland, and his younger brother, Seneca, both from Vermont. The camp cook, known only as Missouri. An Englishman named Goodman, along for the ride. And a boy whose name was Andrew Hall. These were the 10 who dared the unknown with Powell, and some of them would not return. <laughs> Powell had warned his men they would come to rapids, and at the first fast water, he was pleased to see them share his own excitement. The men were fresh, everyone's spirits were high, and the adventure began on a carefree, almost reckless note.
things became more solemn the night Jim Baker and his Indian squaw wandered into camp. He told them all they'd better give it up and walk out while they still had a chance. You know, Major, since the last time I run across you scouting out them canyons last winter, I've been asking some questions about that river, too. Hmm? I've been picking up all the information I can from the Indians, and uh, they say it can't be run. Why not? Well, uh, as far as I can gather, way down below there, there's a big falls. Bigger than Niagara. A real sock doliger right between the cliffs. So a man can't turn around when he gets down there and he can't climb out. Jim, any name Shoshone's ever tried going down that river in spite of the bad medicine? Not to my recollection. Mind if I asked her? No, go right ahead. Lakota with Chasha. My head, I ain't Uh huh. Yeah, she says some of them tried, but they never come back up again. In spite of the Indian woman's wild tales, Powell pushed on. He soon forgot her stories of the spectacle before his eyes. To Powell, the geologist, here was the whole pageant of Earth's creation. But to the others, here were the yawning jaws of death. Now the men were visibly fearful of Jim Baker's terrible Niagara, waiting for them somewhere on ahead. The heat, the hard work of rowing, the fear and the fatigue had all begun to do their work. And tension among the men began to mount for other reasons. Gone brown clotted lies of moldering in the grave, his soul goes marching on. Say, Bradley, how do those words go about hanging Jeff Davis? I don't remember. You were in the Army, weren't you? Yep. Then why don't you know those words? Why don't you know them? I do. Every Northern soldier knows them. You wouldn't be a Johnny Reb, would you? The war's over, Walter. It is for some. It wasn't long before Walter's feud broke out in open warfare. <laughs> nice going, George. Now you got him where you want him. Now put him down on there and shut on him. Now don't let him up for air. Drown him again. the Major's problems mounted. He was learning things he hadn't known about his men. One of them was a curious habit of Bill Dunn's. Stop that gun! You hear me? you ever do that again? You wouldn't, you wouldn't interfere with a man's little pleasures, would you? I would if it risking your life. I think you're going to have to ask yourself a question. What's that? Just how much are you thinking about the lives of these men here? Or is it that you'd rather die and let them die with you than climb out of here to safety? And admit that there's some part of this canyon you couldn't whip. Crisis came on crisis now. Bill, 
You know the desert. How long would it take us to go, say, 50 or 60 miles? Two days, maybe. And another day to climb out of here. You've had your chance, Major. It all boils down to this. There's food up there, even if it's nothing more than a prairie dog. But not down there. The breaking point had come. The men had had enough, most of them anyway. Starvation faced them now, and they knew they must escape this fearful canyon. The question was, how? By riding the river or climbing out? It's no use to argue with them, Wes. They've made up their minds. Craig, why are you stubborn? Mule-headed fools. You want to get yourself killed? Who's going to chart your course for you? Done with that almanac of his? You must be out of your minds. Well, now, you don't suppose we're going to leave you here to die all by yourself, do you, Major? Now, you'd best get your compass and your sextant, because you're coming with us. The Major wasn't coming with them, as it turned out. He and several of the others decided to ride out the rapids. And so the party had finally split up separated at last by fear of the unknown. That's far enough of that. it appeared, had walked into a trap. But the Major, too, was headed for trouble. Rapids ahead! Which was the better way now? To run the gauntlet of hostile Indians or stake one's life on the terrible fury of the river? survive this ordeal and some would not. Now only the fates could decide who would come out of the canyon alive. Only the unwritten pages in Major Powell's journal could reveal the final outcome. And it was this remarkable document that gave us the story of our motion picture, Ten Who Dared. Add sparkle to your life with Canada Dry. Add flavor to your life with Canada Dry. The sparkling, flavorful, quality drinks made by Canada Dry. Mmm, you bet. Canada Dry sparkling flavors really make a party bubble with fun. All the kids' favorites in big king-size bottles. How they go for them. Luscious grape, like none you've ever tasted. True fruit orange, root beer, lots of sparkling flavors. Everybody thinks they're the greatest, even mom. Make life more fun with Canada Dry. For everyone, there's Canada Dry. The sparkling, flavorful, quality drink made by Canada Dry. America's first family of beverages. Well. Making our motion picture, Ten Who Dared, was quite an adventure. But now, for the other adventure on our program. Our setting changes from the Grand Canyon to Yellowstone Park. Probably the outstanding attractions of the park are the bears. Yet there's a side to their story most people never see. It's the story of how the bear behaves when no tourists are around. It's the tale we tell in bear country. And here now to bring it to you is the voice of our true life adventures, Winston Hibbler. When the continent of North America was a virgin wilderness, wild bears ranged from coast to coast and from Hudson's Bay to the Gulf of Mexico. In the time of the Indian and even through the frontier period, 
all of America was still bear country. But as each new territory filled with population, the bears retreated deeper and deeper into the backwoods. Until today, they're concentrated mainly in the Rocky Mountains. Here's a candy bar for you, and it's called Fifth Avenue. No other candy bar will do. Fifth Avenue delicious. Crunchy center, yum, yum, yum. Peanut butter, yum, yum, yum. Honeycomb candy, yum, yum, yum. With almonds, real milk chocolate. Fifth Avenue, a crunchy center of peanut butter and crispy honeycomb candy. Big toasted almonds on top and covered with thick milk chocolate. Yes, real milk chocolate. Crunchy center, yum, yum, yum. Peanut butter, yum, yum, yum. Honeycomb candy, yum, yum, yum. With almonds and real milk chocolate. So get the bar that's made for you. Make sure it is Fifth Avenue. No other candy bar will do. Fifth Avenue delicious. Look for the big five on the wrapper. That's Fifth Avenue. Beginning Sunday, October 30th, right here on ABC, Walt Disney presents a big new season of all new full hour entertainment for your television enjoyment. You'll see Zorro, the handsome rogue of a thousand breathtaking escapades in special new adventures with guest star Gilbert Rowland. And then Walt Disney presents his most temperamental star, Donald Duck, in the hilarious celebration of Donald's Silver Anniversary. You'll share the human warmth of America's youngest football heroes when Walt Disney presents the Pop Warner story. The exciting exploit of a fabulous hero comes to vivid life on ABC when Walt Disney presents the Daniel Boone story. Mark the date, Sunday, October 30th. Walt Disney presents the first in a big new season of all new television shows here on ABC at 6.30 p.m. in most areas. And now to Walt Disney and next week's show. Next week, our show from Fantasyland will be all about magic. And who better to tell it than our old friend, the magic mirror? Coming, master. I'm coming. As I gaze around this room, I'm reminded of many tales of magic that I would like to tell. And tell them he does. You'll see Mickey doing his sleight of hand despite the raucous heckling of a suspicious goblin. In a more romantic mood, you'll meet Cinderella and her fairy godmother whose magic wand transforms Cinderella into the fairest beauty in the land. Oh, it's a beautiful dress. Bibbity, bobbity, boo. Next week, Walt Disney has a surprise for you in All About Magic. Wilma de Pot was calling de Kettle black, and de Kettle was ashamed to answer back. Then de Kettle got shined with a brillo pad. Now it's de Pot that's feeling bad. Ninety-nine squeezes, ninety-nine makes de brillo so pad. Shine, shine, shine. De soap keep working such a long, long time. Ninety-nine squeezes, ninety-nine. Hear me now, that's not all de brillo soap pad's got. The rust resistor sure helps a lot, as long as the pad keeps making soap. Oh, Mr. Rust, he got no hope. There's lots more soap to cut through the crust. And rust resistor to resist the rust. Yes, 99 squeezes, 99 makes the brillo soap pad shine, shine, shine. The soap keep working such a long, long time. 99 squeezes, 99. Brillo soap pad shine, shine, shine. Tonight's program has been brought to you by Luden's, makers of world-famous Luden's cough drops with a flavor to please everyone and delicious chocolate Fifth Avenue candy bars and new soapier Brillo soap pads. There's more soap, 99 squeezes worth in every new Brillo soap pad. Tonight 
on Walt Disney Presents, you shared in an exciting river adventure, undertaken in order to produce Walt Disney's newest motion picture, Ten Who Dared. Now, Ten Who Dared is ready for showing in motion picture theaters, where you can see in breathtaking color the entire exciting story of ten desperate men who dared to defy the river of death. See Walt Disney's Ten Who Dared in a theater near you. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.